so we'll look at some widgets again actually um because i've been oh, contributing to what to call for two or three years now and every time somebody says use a layer sebastian says don't no don't use a layer because it's it's too slow um but we use layers a lot i think layers are really useful um so i've added um a rules module which allows you to build rules in the layer without using javascript um, which should be a lot well, faster um, it's funny because that's how it was called in Australia one yeah, well called, you know the rules module and it probably had conditions i mean i yes i remember well, the module from from orchard one yeah they so. made a very uh, simplistic uh, logical expression interpreter and yes you had your expressions and you had custom method names and parameter and that's it and it's just later that uh, i added javascript but yeah that was it good job rules. <laughs> absolutely so rules so we expand the rules a little bit um so what we have now is when you edit your layer you have rules that you can add to a layer with a nice little pop-up um, and for example in this layer the always layer it just has a, a boolean condition of, of true um, or you can choose to be false if, if you were making this layer a, a never a never wanting to render um, and and then some of the uh, other layers we have in this case a home page condition. Um, this one also gets nice little options. You know, is the home page or is not the home page? Because um, you might want to have the have the negative. Um, we have a slightly more complicated one. Um, so we have a URL here, um, and this is actually mapped in a. Um, and they all group um, so if we were to say add another url to this uh, my filtering doesn't work i haven't even tried it we've got the, choose the url choose the um the kind of comparison operator that you want to use on your on, on the condition that you're going to apply to it and say url equals Let's say contains blog. Um, and in this case, with a with an all condition, both of these rules that we've set here now need to be true. Um, obviously, they're both true. Well, no, the, the first one's true because it's blog post, and the second one's true because it contains blog. But you could vary that if you wanted to. Um, so if we were to look at that on the site. That one shows on the home page. That always one renders. Get to the authenticator one in a second. Um, but when we go to this blog post, which is on blog slash post, which was one of our first conditions, we should have. Yep. Blog posts all there. But if we were to go to the second blog post, which aptly titled not a post even though it is a post um, we don't see that layer um, what else have we got so there's there's more rules there's the anonymous one there's the um, authenticated one um, which is just the anonymous condition this is specifically it is anonymous so there's no kind of true or false setting on it there's no settings at all um, same for authenticated. Um, I haven't had time to do the. We have another rule is in role, which is a very useful one. Um, and there's a culture rule as well, which um, still needs to be done. Um, and I've also added a content type rule here, um, which you can use to evaluate based on the displayed content type. Um, and again, it has the, the option of operators, so you can have um, content types that start with, um, you know, I quite, a, quite often use section as a 
um, a name for a range of content types that are that are reasonably similar. Um, so you can pick what you want there um, in terms of rules. Um, you can also have. I'll just delete that for a second because I haven't quite added the drag and drop yet. Um, so you can have two types of groups. You can have an, an all group, which gives you which in which case all of the rules inside the group must be true, or you can have an any group, which is basically or. Um, so you could go and here you could go. Content type. Article. Or content type. Blog and then it will show on the article pages and the blog pages. Um, one of the other rules that's here as well, just looking through them quite quickly, is um, a JavaScript rule, funnily enough. Um, so um, in the case of um, some of the migrations, what we might do is migrate all the JavaScript rules that we don't necessarily know and can't identify into a JavaScript um, rule and then allow people to migrate into the, um, the the other role conditions over time. Um, so yeah, that's that's the demo. Nice quick one. Can you go back on the, the one right before? If you go back. What does it mean? Rules any condition group or and at on the bottom there is also a JavaScript condition. Is it the end? Between the or. Okay, so by default you can add multiple rules and they are all ends. Yeah. Okay, so you just use the all condition group if it's a sub group. Exactly. So you know, I mean you don't want to build up too many complicated ones, but you could add um, another all group in here. Um, And then add, add a couple of nested. They can nest as much as you want, but you, you, you're not probably going to want to, to nest them too much. But it's it's quite possible. Um, so we can go put an so end inside an, inside the all. Oh yeah, okay. So if you add one in the all, so I've got. And we're, we're going to end up writing a rule here that that can never evaluate to true. Um, yeah, just to see how it works. But just to, just to see how it works. Um, yes, personally, I would I would just have exposed the end or groups as a first class element on this screen, so that they are not. Uh, it's interesting that they are just like any other rule, but you it would I don't know if it would make a better UI more intuitive to say you guys can end you can add ends and alls. I'm not sure it's better. Just, yeah, yeah, I kind of looked like, looked at that. I uh, I got inspired by the jQuery um, query builder, um, but it, having the ands ors kind of at the top level just made it a little bit more confusing. Um, perhaps I need to say and here, or have a have a better hint to say that any of the rules you there, you add there must be true. Um, didn't want to try and overly confuse the. Um, the UI, but it, it could go that way, yeah. So if you edit the description, oh, can you? Oh, you can't. Can you edit description of a rule? So um, because right now it's generated, can it be? No, okay, there is no description. Oh, it's, it's a name. Oh, there's a name. So, oh, so, so that's 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 the description which shows up. Oh, that, that's where, okay. So the type is still displayed. It's not like type what you want. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I still show the type. There's still a bit of um, work here to do on the UI because Gulp seems to have broken at the moment, so I can't um, because I wanted to have drag and drop between groups. Um, yeah, when you're yeah, so you can move when I yeah, that's why I'm saying maybe it's easier if it's just a first class concept on the main controller that you can drag and drop, add things to groups, and then you just have leaves 
in the in the groups. So you just end up, yeah. Might be easier. It, it, it could be. The only problem that went with that was um so if you so if you have an any group here and or if I delete a few of these. If I delete the whole delete that one. Um, so if you at the top level if you would and maybe it's just a just a, a, a tab or something instead. Um, if you had two JavaScript conditions, yeah, just to make sure that it, it won't work, um, and then want to add a add a group to it, um, how do you force that those JavaScript conditions now must be in some kind of a group? Um, That's why you need drag and drop. Maybe is why you need drag and drop. Um, what was the so jQuery? So the, the query builder for jQuery um, had this concept. They just they just tab them as to as to what group you've you've got at the top. So you can either select and or or so that you know that you're always in a group. Um, but I didn't like how they split out the add role and add group, and it just it felt like the UI was a bit too complicated. Yeah, yeah I'm sure that someone who's found a, a good solution for that. I don't have yeah, one mind, but it, it's it's this is not bad. This is not a, a bad one, but um, yeah, we now it's faster. Well, it should be faster. <laughs> you haven't tried. <laughs> well, it seems faster. <laughs> Uh, um, I mean, it seems fast on my machine. Um, admittedly, I've got the mini profile. No, you, I'm not sure you will, you will see it. Like, no. you to, to run a load, like with Bombardier. And no, you need, you need, you need, you need to, test that, to test drive that one. Um, so one of the things I did do was make it async because the JavaScript rules aren't interpreted as async at the moment, and I've already got rules that use get awaiters. Um, but then value task and not task. Yeah, value task. Yeah, because they are more often non-async. Yeah, in their yes. implementation. Yeah, so most of our implementations are non-async, but um, but yeah, I use value task, um, and so we have a nice little. It needs. It still needs a bit of optimizing, um, but there's a, nice a rule migrator I started, um, which will just migrate. Uh, so why you, yeah, why uh, why not just make it generic like take whatever is inside the thing, the name? Oh, but because you don't have a name first, okay. Uh, but yeah, here I see if it's equal if it's called. Oh, I see because you, oh no 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 sorry okay so you replace these two explicitly by the new better ones. You didn't do like oh JavaScript before JavaScript now. Yeah, yeah. So these ones, which are, are known quantities, because makes sense. We use them in the recipes. Um, yes, that's good. And same with probably as anonymous and um, a couple of the other ones. Um, but the other ones just go straight to JavaScript. Um, and I think it still makes sense to have a JavaScript condition because, of course, you can do more with it. Um, yes. Okay. But if you want to implement your own, then it's just a matter of implementing a couple of classes and. Um, and, you, and you've got your own. You um, so trees. I have so the, the the evaluation itself is cached in the layers module. Um, so it may have, it might have already have been done. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think already that optimization has probably been applied. OK. Um, yeah, so that's what we got. Thank you. Yeah, if someone can find well, it is good as it is, but I am sure we can find a better way to manage these groups. I I like to be able to give it a name for everything or a description, like you did for the layer, for the roots, because here you see JavaScript condition, JavaScript condition. So if at least you display the beginning of the condition like you do for the rest, for the all, for instance, that would be interesting. Uh, but if we could provide a name, that might be also better. 
Yeah, we could certainly name them. Um, if we don't want to name, yeah, like, like, like do we do this way? Yeah, okay. Um, but we could pretty this up as well, and yeah, that's could, fine. Or that could be badged or something along those lines over time. If you keep the end and all as rules, then uh, if it can be drag and drop, that's perfect. Cool. I mean, one solution might just be to add automatically, always add a, an all group when it gets created. So it's just sitting there waiting to have stuff put into it. That could be a default just to make them, to make it obvious that it's an end. Um, but yeah, but still, like you, now you want that, you want to move two of them inside your subgroup. That's yeah, I see what you mean. You're, you're trying to see to see how you don't have to create drag and drop because that's a lot of work. Oh, no, drag and drop's easy. I just need to fix the gold pipeline. Um, it already it, uh, did. I no, maybe I turned it off. I think I turned it off. You've got a cursor. <laughs> I've got a cursor. The the, the CSS is there. Yes. Um, so if, if you could be moved, that would be great. I, I think drag and drop is is, is not. Actually and too and then you can keep the end or as rules. So that you add a all and any all, and then you can drag and drop them. That's cool. Cool. Awesome.